Most of my listening time with the RTL SDR dongle is spent using SDR Sharp or Unitrunker. So let's have a look now in depth at SDR Sharp. And for this example, we'll use a NOAA weather radio station on 162.55 megahertz on the VHF band. As you can see, the radio is tuned there. This area of the display is called the spectrum display. This is the waterfall. This is the IF display. And this is the audio display. We're set to narrow FM mode. And our bandwidth is 12,500 hertz. 12.5 kilohertz. We have a relative squelch level set at 75. That's a relative number. So as with setting the squelch for any radio, find the number that works for you. Let's give a listen. Five feet, building to four to seven feet. Chance of showers in the morning, then showers likely in the afternoon. Chance 60s. Southwest winds five to 10 miles an hour. Thursday night, mostly cloudy, miles an hour. Wednesday, mostly cloudy in the morning, then becoming partly sunny. Not as cool. 14 p.m. Tuesday and 10.57 a.m. Wednesday. So we have a few NOAA weather radio stations, just 50 kilohertz apart each. And the one we're tuned to right now is the one in Midtown Manhattan, which comes in strongest at my location. Let's look at the audio tab, and I have filter audio checked. The filter that we're using is the Blackman Harris 4 filter, which is on this drop down list. I use Blackman Harris 4 because it's the default and it works just fine. Let's listen switching in and out the audio filter. As of 3 p.m. at Central Park, it was cloudy. The temperature was 44 degrees, the dew point 30, and the relative humidity 57%. The wind was variable at city. This afternoon, partly sunny. Near steady temperature in the upper 40s. Southeast winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy. Not as cool with lows in the upper 30s. South winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Wednesday, mostly cloudy in the morning, then becoming partly sunny. So there's an example of a couple of stations switching in and out the audio filter. I find that the AGC does make a difference. Here, we'll check that. Out. Five miles an hour. Thursday, partly sunny. So this is off. Highs in the upper 60s. Southwest winds five to 10 miles an hour. That's on. And you'll note you can play with the AGC threshold as well as the decay and the slope. Great thing about playing in software is you're not going to break anything. The FFT display tab is where you can do things like speed up or slow down the display in case you have a reason to either have a closer look at something or have more data scroll by. I usually just leave that at the default. The next five items are part of the Frequency Manager suite, and they are the Frequency Manager and Scanner, so in the Manager you can set up memories, assign them to groups, classify them by protocol and by service, and then in the Scanner portion you can select a group to scan or a frequency range to scan. There's a frequency entry panel if you'd like to manually enter a frequency, although usually what I do is I use the arrow keys and manually will change frequency to whatever I want or if I'm in a busy chunk of spectrum and there's an interesting signal, I could just click on it like that. You'll notice here that even though I was clicking on 162,450, I wasn't quite on it and I'm coming up with some interesting frequencies. That's controlled by the snap to grid feature. 
you could either turn that off and then it'll go exactly where you click and I mean exactly carried out to Hertz or you can set a step size of something that will be a little more practical depending on what you're listening to and set that to 5 kilohertz for example and we'll click here and then you see we end up on even multiples of 5 kilohertz and we're on 162.45 now if you like you can use the software to collect some interesting metrics like busiest frequencies or longest transmissions or what frequencies are busy at what time you can collect activity of the frequencies you're scanning put it into a log and then take that log and dump it all into a spreadsheet for some more analysis there's a scheduler and you can add a time and frequency to begin recording based on your memories however while there is a local time field that's the start time and there doesn't appear to be any way to specify a stop time so you'll just have to stop things manually